Hello everyone. Today we are here to study chapter number three of geography. That is our changing earth. The earth is a dynamic planet. It keeps on changing throughout. There are different types of landforms on our earth surface that could be mountains, volcanoes, mushroom rocks, delta, sea arcs, sand dunes, and many others. The changes that occur on the earth surface are due to two types of forces. The first, namely endogenic force. Second, exogenic force. First of all, we are going to study endogenic forces in detail. Endogenic forces, these forces refer to the forces that occur beneath the surface of the earth. These forces act deep inside the earth's core where heat is generated. The heat is transferred upward to the mantle causing it to slowly circulate. This movement of lava applies force on the lithospheric plates above it. These plates keep on shifting and sliding at a very, very slow speed. You can say a few millimeters in a year in different directions. The movement of these plates is called tectonic activity or plate tectonics. There are nearly 20 lithospheric plates below the Earth's surface. They are of different sizes. Different type of endogenic forces that causes change on the Earth's surface could be earthquakes, tsunami, volcano, and many other. First of all, we'll study about earthquake. What is an earthquake? An earthquake is a sudden tremor or the movement of the Earth's crust that originates naturally at or below the surface of the earth. What causes earthquakes? How these earthquakes occur? As we all know, the earth's surface is subjected to endogenic forces, which work beneath the earth's surface. This force makes the plates to move at a very slow speed. However, a sudden movement of these plates triggers an earthquake. An earthquake is recorded on a seismograph or a seismometer. Focus or hypocenter. Focus is the point where the, which is deep below the surface. It is the point of origin of the earthquake. What is an epicenter? Epicenter is the point on the Earth's surface which is directly above the focus. It is most commonly used to describe the point of concentration of an earthquake. Earthquakes are measured using the movement magnitude scale. This measures the size of the seismograph or the seismic waves during an earthquake which is measured on the scale called Richter scale. Second is the volcano. A volcano is an opening or a rapture in a planet's surface, on the Earth's surface, that allows the hot, hot molten magma or ashes to escape from below the surface of the Earth. Next is the endogenic forces. Endogenic forces refers to the external phenomena that occur on or above the Earth's surface. The main elements of exogenic forces are air and water. What is a waterfall? Waterfall are often formed where a layer of harder rock overlays a layer of softer rocks. As the river passes over the softer rock, it is able to erode it as at a faster rate, forming a step in the riverbed. Next is the river. River cause changes on the surface over which it flows. 
What are meanders? It is a snaking pattern of water that is formed by alternatively eroding sediments from the outside of the bend and depositing them on the inside. Second form of river. Second change that the river causes is the Oxbow Lake. An Oxbow Lake is a U-shaped body of water that forms when a wide meander form from the main stream of the river is cut off, creating a freestanding body of water. This landform is so named for its distinctive curved shape resembling the bowpin of an oxbow. It is referred as an oxbow lake. The third is the floodplain. A floodplain is normally a flat area of land very next to a river or a stream. It stretches from the banks of the river to the outer edges of the valley. Floodplains are naturally flooding outlets for rivers. The next change on the earth's surface caused by river is the lives. In times of flood, a river may overflow its banks and spread over the floodplain. As it does so, it loses energy and deposits its material across the floodplain. As it takes more energy to carry large particles, these are deposited first and therefore build up along the bank of the river to form a natural embankment, which are referred as lakes. These keep on becoming higher every time the river floods. The next change brought by the river is the delta. Deltas are formed at the mouth of a river where the river flows into the ocean or other water bodies. When a river carrying sediments reaches a body of standing water, it reduces its velocity, causing it to deposit the sediments at the mouth. Over time, these sediments build up to rise above the surface of water. The river then cuts across the land and forms different branches. These branches of the river are called the distributaries. The next are the exogenic forces. They are the sea waves. Sea waves also create various changes in landforms. Sea caves, first of all, they are because of the continuous waves, actions of the sea erode the rocky faces of the sea here to form caves. Then the sea arcs are formed over a period of time. Then the stacks. Stacks are formed when part of a main landform is eroded by water action. Finally, the beaches. Sea waves leave behind sediments in the form of fine sand at these places. They are called as beaches and we generally enjoy these places. The next changes are the glaciers. Glaciers are accumulation of snow that are formed in areas where the amount of snow that falls exceeds the amount that melts. They are basically the frozen rivers. Glacial moraines. Moraine is sediment deposited by the glaciers. Median moraine, a mass of rock carried down by it glaciers at its edges. What are mushroom rocks? The rocks which are in the shapes of mushrooms, as the word itself tells you that. Usually they are found in deserts. The wind blowing at high speed takes with it sand particles. The particles being heavier remain closer to the surface. And as the wind passes along the rocks, the sand particles erode the portion and gives the rock a shape of mushroom. Now, the wind. Wind can create landforms when it deposits its sediments, especially in deserts and along coasts. Sand dune and loess are the two examples, are the features 
which are formed by the deposition of wind. First of all, let's see what are sand dunes. A sand dune is a mound of sand formed by the wind. Dunes form when wind blows sand into a sheltered area behind an obstacle. Dunes grow as grains of sand accumulate. Every dune has a windward side and a slip face. Lois. It is a sedimentary deposit of mineral particles. These particles are finer than sand, but are coarser or you can say thicker than the dust or the clay. These are deposited by the wind. Lois is a type of silt which forms fertile topsoil in some parts of the world. The soil has few clay particles to hold it together. So that's all for the chapter. Thank you. Have a nice day.